to our lives, Lord. I pray that you bless uh, tonight's teaching and that these uh, songs, words, not just be empty, uh, empty noise or words, Father God, that be a sweet groan to you, Lord, just a, a blessing to you, Lord. And we ask that uh, you will be done here tonight, Lord. We ask all these things in your mighty and precious name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 All right.
Some of the announcements. Do one more? Okay. Let's go ahead and do one more. Amen. Praise God. You know what's funny is that? <laughs> we had an extra song. The guy just, he, he must have known. He knew. <laughs> Praise God.
We get so consumed with life that sometimes we compromise our commitment to you. May God forgive us for that. Lord, may your Holy Spirit revive us to reunite our life, God. May we truly understand what it means to be yours. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, a few announcements. I will notice. If you guys have a phone, please come on silent or off. Great, we appreciate it. A lot of kids here tonight. That's great, man. Wow. A lot of kids. Nice kids tonight. Um, and if, if you guys don't have a Bible, please raise your hand. We'll get you one or a pen and paper. We'd love to have you guys uh, taking notes. We're here studying the Word. One more request, too. You know, I just want to ask you guys, if, if, uh, especially during the study, you guys can please try to avoid making distractions uh, from each other because we're trying really hard to focus if you are talking behind you or uh, ask you guys to talk before or after. You can go to the restroom. Please try to go before or after. And of course, you can sometimes. I realize that. But you know, our, our goal is to become distraction-free. So we really all focus. You guys agree? Yeah, awesome. Also, we have a few dates, a very important dates you guys are all going to love, you're going to be excited. Uh, for one, July 17th, which is going to be in two weeks from this week, we're going to have our third anniversary potluck. Three years. If you guys want to bring something, please speak to Maureen. Uh, she's our event coordinator, so she'll be able to handle most of the things. But ultimately, you know, we want to really invite all of our friends and family, people that used to come here and not here anymore, or just even people that we haven't seen before. We have a really nice, fun, like, full of fun activities for the families and kids, and we sure want to have a good time, enjoy some of God's glory during that anniversary, but more so just have some really great fellowship. Right? That's July 17th and two weeks from now. Uh, and also, July 26th will be our, our next event for the lounge. 18 and over. Sorry. 18 and over. You know, again, it's open to the entire ministry as well as outside the world. So believers, non believers, ultimately, we want to just really have this place like a safe house to be able to reach out to people that, that don't have Christ or church or don't know Christ and also to be a witness to those and fellowship with those that are already believers to continue to keep the fire going. If you guys have a heart or desire to want to serve, we can definitely use volunteers. So it takes quite a few hours to set up and quite a few hours to break down. Uh, and if it's in your heart, we can definitely appreciate and, and, and use that. Also, one more day too, we have a finalized date for our beach baptism and beach fellowships, bonfire kind of deal. It's going to be August 18th. August 18th? Yes, August 18th. So we're going to have a big baptism and a potluck for that. So if you haven't been baptized and you desire to be baptized, please see one of the, the coordinators or, you know, or myself and we'll kind of go over what that means and hopefully this is good instruction. And we'd love to have you baptized in the ocean. It'd be kind of cool. Uh, also, Pastor Regis, too, for your ministry, you guys are definitely welcome to come out here. We kind of have like one real big baptism of people in your ministry, too. We're going to invite also a, a Spirit of Joy and Pastor David and so forth and welcome out there if you can. It's going to be a, a pretty fun day on Sunday or Saturday? Sunday? It's on a Sunday though. So, maybe you guys study the beach. I don't know. We'll figure that part out. Then we're going to have a kids camp out night here. Yeah! Alright? So, we see all the kids here and, and, and the goal is really, um, you know, last night we had a really nice strong meeting with the entire Led by One staff. And, uh, you know, we, we really want to make some solid changes in the right direction and be able to communicate and fellowship with each one of us. You know, we're one family. There's no longer that thing with any than another. And so ultimately, we, we want to be able to be used just, just to be available for you guys and to really push and drive the next generation as well. They're a big part of this ministry. Uh, it's like they're in different, in different rooms. They are a major part of the leadership and evangelism of, of the world in the future. So we want to pour into these guys and girls and uh, really just uh, help evolve them and give them a, a place to be safe and have fun. All right? But 
that date will be is to be determined. To be determined. Which date? Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. We'll, you know, we'll pick a date, but it's in the making. So we're, we're coming together with, with other ministries as well to come alongside and, and kind of learn with and bring some of those tools here. You know, we're, we're always learning, we're always growing. If you have any ideas, any thoughts, we can definitely use them. Right? We, we want to have as one big family, it's not just our way, it's, it's, you know, it's the Lord's way, according to God's word, and, you know, we'll come together and just, you know, let the Spirit be. So with that being said, let's all stand in prayer. And we'll excuse the kids. You guys hot? It's cold. Oh, hot. It's, it's cold. cold. You freezing? Oh, oh like, hello, oh, man. Menopause.
the, the blueprint of the beginning point begins with Christ. It, do, it doesn't begin with man. It begins with Christ. And so once we understand, you know, what, what's supposed to go down between us and God, then we can take that and begin to distribute or, or, or begin to act out with humanity the way that we should. I think a lot of times we make mistakes in life is because we try to start with one another first instead of starting with the Lord. You know, and when everything falls apart with one another, then we turn to the Lord. But if we turn to the Lord first, you know, we start off on the right foot. Then we have the ability to be able to begin right. And if we uh, if we sway away or if we deviate from what we should have been doing, we always can go back to what's right. All right. So it's about building a firm foundation and making sure things are right from the beginning. All right. Another thing I want to say tonight uh, is that guys. I want, you, I want you to open up your minds in such a way that you refuse to live a lie. All right? Can, can we agree tonight? Yeah. All right? I mean, can, can, you, can you refuse to live a lie? All right? Because when we get to the place of being transparent with ourselves, not everybody else, we can refuse to live a lie. There are so many people in the world that we live in that are living a lie. And, and, and if we're going to be people of truth, we should want to live the truth, right? 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 Yeah. All right. So that, that's our goal. That's our focus tonight is that every last one of us that, that's possibly not in truth in whatever, whatever area of life that we'll begin to live in truth. And we thank God for giving us the light, the great light, you know, to come to the place of illumination and understanding, you know, what God has designed for us on earth. All right. So uh, on that note, uh, we, we kind of like, uh, I'm going to have a starting point. We kind of finished last week. Uh, understanding uh, that God created man and in God's system of creation of created man that God's desire was to fellowship with man. All right, For him to have communion with man. And, and, and as God fellowship with man or man fellowship with God that there will be a healthy healthy uh, system of communion uh, between God and man. Alright? And we talked about the components of honesty and you know, uh, trustworthiness and truthfulness and all that stuff that has to go within a relationship. You know, uh, we talked about not being deceitful, uh, operating deceit. You know, Adam, when he sinned in the Garden of Eden, immediately he went into a place of covering himself with something that he wasn't familiar with. You know, and when the glory lifted, what he was closed with, you know, uh, he began to see himself in a light that he never saw himself. And uh, if I didn't communicate that, I'm communicating it now. Uh, uh, so, but it's a lot. When we do a relationship, it's a lot. And so, uh, you know, I'm just going to try to hit the high point uh, so you guys are able to, like, really grasp what, uh, what the Spirit of God is speaking to you tonight. Now, when God created man, He created Adam first. He created the male first. And then He looked at the man and He said, It's not good for man to be alone. Now, God had created a perfect being. All right? He had created a perfect being. But we look, when He looked at his perfect being, he said, you know what? It's not good for him to be alone. I mean, this, is, this is God's perspective. This wasn't man's view. This was God's perspective. That, that he had created a man, but Adam didn't have anybody that was human that he could fellowship with. You know, he had all the animals. He had everything else that he had created, but there was no companion for Adam. All right? The Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9, we're not going to go there and dissect that scripture for the second time. And I'm just going to hit it. All right, the Bible tells us clearly that woman was created for man. All right? You know, we can go into the whole deal as woman was created for man, and then God used woman to bring man, which was the Savior, Jesus Christ, through the woman. But the point I want to focus on is that woman was created for man. It was first the man, then the woman. But the woman was a gift from God to the man. All right? Do we have that established? That's biblical. All right, that's biblical. Okay? And I mean that that's a that's an amazing thing. That that God gave man a woman. I mean, a gift. And so you women, you gifts. We got a bunch of gifts in the house. And so, so so what we want to do tonight, we want to up your value. Come on, All right? Let's change the value system. All right, well, they got a black in the night. Hey, we want to change your value system. You know, because many women have been devalued. You know, been devalued. So we want to let you know who you are. Nobody's never told you who you are. I'm going to tell you tonight who you really are. All right, so we understand that God created woman for the man, 
And in that whole sense is that there is a certain mechanism that God put in place for man and woman to dwell together. All right? And that mechanism is called marriage. All right? It's called marriage. God instituted marriage in the Garden of Eden himself between Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve, but Adam and Eve. Male, female. All right? All right we, we, don't, we don't want to misconstrue these scriptures. All right? Ain't, there is no gray area in this. All right? The first human was a man. He was male. The second human was a woman. She was female. Right? God didn't create two men and he didn't create two women. He created a man and he created a woman for the man. All right? Man, we're going we're gonna to have some people get straight, you know? I mean, because we need to understand this deal. Yes, sir. Yeah, we need to put you on the Supreme Court. <laughs> hey. All right. You know? That God will be done. <laughs> I have no comment. I plead the fifth. All right. I am on the Supreme Court. The heavenly Supreme Court. Amen. Amen. I'm standing for the kingdom. And so, so, so the deal is, is that we understand that this is a part of the story of creation. Right? It's not just a good story. This is the original blueprint of creation. It's not a good idea. It's not skepticism. It's the way it is. How do you know? You're looking at a man. And you can look around and see women. Around. Right? It got a lot of other stuff walking around here. But, but you, you can see a man and you can see a woman. And you can tell that that story is legitimate. Because that there are men on the earth and there are women on the earth. There's no other story in history, not in any other religion, that can prove the existence of man and woman the way that God said that he created it. There's nothing else. Nothing else. All right, so in saying that, there are, we want to talk about the biblical pre-qualifications that you should have as you enter into a relationship with a, a, a man or a woman concerning marriage. All right, now, what I'm, what I'm speaking tonight, I'm speaking law. All right, I just want to tell you, this this is this is not up for negotiation. All right, I am speaking law, not speaking law for the law of Moses, but I'm speaking the pure, unadulterated law of God. All right, there there is a perfect system that God Himself put in place. Now we can choose whatever we want to choose. All right, this, this is not something. This is one of these things like the blood. You know, the blood of Jesus is the blood. Sin is sin. Grace is grace. You know, Christ came, he died, he lived, he rose from the grave, hell is hell. The he heaven is heaven. You know, the devil is the devil, God is God. And so what I'm teaching tonight is God's biblical principle. I mean, there, there is no deep, we, we have no other instructions from the Bible outside of what I'm about to tell you. All right? So, what is the biblical pre-qualifications that you and I should have as we enter into a marriage relationship? Okay? Because I'm not concerned about what Dr. Phil got to say. I'm not concerned about what Oprah had to say. You know, I mean, they can say some great things, and I'm not hating them. I want to know what God has to say. All right? Because I can do it their way, or I can do it God's way. I, I am a believer. All right? You are believers. And so what I'm speaking to you has to do with believers. You know, we're not putting anybody else down. This is for the church, this is for God's people. You know, we don't have to fight a war over what the world is doing. We know what we're supposed to do. All right, let's take a stand what we're supposed to do. All right? So let's go to 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through, I'm going to read verse 14 through 15. And uh, you can just mark it in your Bible or you can go to it. I'm going to be reading out a couple different uh, interpretations tonight. I'm going to read out of the uh, NLT, the New Living Translation. I'm going to read out of the message version. And uh, if you would like me to, I'll read out of the King James version. You know, because I don't have I don't have the time uh, that it's going to take to go through every word. You know, I mean, we, we could go through every word in the Greek, and I can establish theologically what I'm saying to be legitimate, but praise God for good, wealthy interpretation so I can get what I need to get to you without going into all that. You know, but somebody might say, well, how do you know that? You, you can't come on the sidewalk. We'll pull the Greek word up, and I'll show you, you know, how what I'm saying is, is how, how do I know what I'm saying is legitimate? So, in the uh, in the New Living Translation, 
uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 through 15, it says, Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with the unbelievers? Alright? Now I want to read this in the message version. It says here, in the message version, it says, don't become partners with those who reject God. That's real good. Alright? How can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not partnership. That's war. Is light best friends with dark? Does Christ go strolling with the devil? Do trust and mistrust hold hands? Who would think of setting up pagan idols in God's holy temple? But that is exactly what we are. Each of us a temple in whom God lives. God himself put it this way. All right? Now, if you read that in the Amplified Version, the Amplified said, don't make mismated alliances with people that don't believe what you believe. Talking about Jesus Christ. Talking about your faith. All right? So, so the number one rule for a believer, right, if you are preparing to get married or, or, or you are in a relationship with somebody, the Bible tells me, do not enter into covenant with people that don't believe in your God. Now, it's real quiet, but this is the Bible. Alright? Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Anybody want to know what's going to happen? Alright? I, 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 I can give you several uh, excerpts from the Bible. But the first excerpt I give you is when God spoke to the children of Israel and He said, don't go up there and I'm speaking, I'm, I'm going to speak Ebonics. I'm going to speak the language tonight. Alright? You know? He said, do not go up there and sleep around and mess around with those Moabite women. Say, so why? Why, God? It said, because if you go messing around with them, they're going to turn you away from me and you're going to find yourself worshiping their God. I mean, he, that, that's, he just put it real plain. Alright? Solomon in the Bible. Solomon was a man to God. His daddy, David, was a man to God. His mom, Bathsheba, became a woman of God. They birthed a man to God. But the man to God allowed women to get in his place, to get in his way. He had too many women. He started bringing idols in the house of God. He started polluting the house of God because of the desires of his many women. And the Bible says that God stripped the kingdom away from him. Because uh, he dealt with women that worship pagan gods. Alright? This is real stiff. This is real stiff. And you can run off and marry whoever you want to marry. And you can do whatever you feel like you need to do. But, but, but if you're going to be sad, right? If you're going to do it God's way, right? The first battle that you should win is to be in a relationship with somebody that's a believer. Alright? Is that clear? Anybody got any questions right there? Is that pretty clear? The Bible says... Tell us here, it said, how are you going to team up with somebody that don't believe in your God? How are you going to team up with them? Because something's going to have to give, because you, you might start going to church too much. And they're going to say, hey, you go to church too much. You need to hang out at home with me. I've been pastor for 11 years, and I, I know people that were saved, walked with the Lord, got married to people, and their husband started looking at them on Sunday because he started getting jealous of their relationship with God and say, you need to stay at home today, baby. You know, you go to you give too much money to the church. You spend too much time up there with those children, or vice versa. It's because there's going to be a conflict of interest. You know, so so when you're walking with somebody and you're developing a relationship with somebody, they need to be in sync with you, right? That, that, that you don't need to be butt head starting out. They need to walk with you. You know, you don't need to get married getting in the docks on the walls. They need to walk with you. You already got enough balance. Yes, sir, Pastor. Same thing. Same thing. You know, and that, that takes on a different deal. It's because a lot of people can't digest that. What was the question? It was the 
He said, he, he, he said, Pastor Abe said, even like business partners, you know, uh, making business deals pretty much with people that don't believe what you believe. It depends on what type of business you're in, but I'm telling you, you can get yourself in a world of trouble violating the scripture as a believer. You know, because they may ask you to come, uh, you know, just for instance, they may ask you to come build a church of Satan. You're going to build it. They might ask you to build another strip club and you're a contractor. You're going to build it. You're going to say, that's my way of living. No, you're going to turn that down. You know, because guess what? That's against your belief systems. You're going to go around erecting altars to the devil? I mean, honestly. I mean, these are things that we have to give in consideration of. You know what I mean? But, but it's all about what's your conviction. You know, because some people say, oh, no, that's legalism. No, what's your conviction? What's your conviction? You know, because when we stand before the Lord, we're going to have to answer what we've done in this body. Not what is going to send us to hell or heaven, but it's going to deal with your reward system. And that's a whole other deal. You know? I mean, are you building up your kingdom here, or are you building up his kingdom? Because when we build his kingdom, our treasures are in heaven, not in earth. All right? And if you believe God to be your provider, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You know? That's the reason it's good sometimes you're in business, you don't need to know too much about people. Let's just make a deal. Let's see you later. Bye. You know? Paul, at you. Yes, sir. When I go to a customer's house, uh -huh. for instance, on a contract, uh -huh. I don't ask these people if, if they're Christians or not. I'm That's taking, right. I'm not taking care of business. That's right. You take care of business. I'm not getting involved with their person. Don't get involved, man. It's real simple. Yeah. Pastor Abe was talking about more partnership. Yeah. Not in that angle. you got to do your job. Yeah. You're going to do your job. But don't erect no strip clubs for them. You got to do your job. I took this trip down. Yeah, and he, he took it down. Praise God. Amen. Well, Pastor, Pastor Abraham is speaking for us more as business partner. You know, you can't you can't be a business partner with some crook. You can't be a business partner with somebody that's not right. Because guess what? Whatever they got going on, gonna bleed over in your in your stuff. You know, it's just the way that it is. You know, I mean, you, you can't have, you can't mix your clean money with their dirty money. You know, because somebody's going to pay for it. You know, chances are you're going to pay for it. They're already paying for it long term anyway. You know, I mean, so so we have to we have to come to a place where we begin to break covenant. You, you, can't, you can't make covenant with the devil. Because when you make covenant with the devil, hey, you hooked up with the devil. You know, you're signing your name in blood. And you don't want to do that. You know, I'm glad Pastor asked that because that's something that I wasn't even going to go there. I mean, because that's something we all need to know. You know, I mean, you don't want some people you hook up with, it's a death hookup. You know, you just need to just cut them loose. And it, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you in the natural. But on the back end, you got to depend on Jehovah Jireh to take care of you. You know, you can't depend on, you know, how much you're going to benefit from them. You know, because it, it'll run you down in the long run. It really will. All right. Uh, so we understand that, that we, we should not be in a place to where we're trying to walk with people it's like building a relationship with them and they're in darkness. Alright? Now we, we don't we don't we don't look at people and we don't treat people like the scum of the earth, but if we sit down hanging out, we developing a relationship and all that type of stuff, you know, and, and you become an intimate with me and, and you find out secret things about me and I'm, you, you telling me stuff about you, you know, I need to make sure that we both believe us. And I shouldn't find myself doing it all the time because it's like the, it's like the principle of the one bad apple that's in a bag of good apples. You, I don't care how prophetic you are, you can't change that principle unless you remove the bad apple. Because that bad apple stays there long enough, it's going to rot the whole bag. The whole bag. It's like a cancer. And it spreads. That, that, that is a natural principle. You know? I mean, so, so we can go on and choose what we want to choose, but the reality of that happening is just the way life is. It's just the way that it goes. All right? So uh, I'm going to share uh, just a deal here that this has come from uh, one of our bishops, his name is Bishop Tudor Bismarck uh, from uh, Harawi. And he, him and his wife did like a marriage deal. And this is one of the things Bishop Tudor said. He said, don't marry the one you can live with. Marry the one that you, can live, you can't live without. Don't marry somebody that you can live with. Marry the one that you can't, you can't afford to live without. You know, I couldn't live without my wife. I couldn't see myself without my wife. I can't even begin to fix my eyes, you know, to be without her. And that's where we got all these kids. Everything we got is intertwined. You know, it would it would like it would be to my benefit to try to get away from her. Or her to try to get away from me. It's just we we're too hooked up. You know, bank accounts, everything, you know. I mean, I hair on my arm, everything. We're just hooked up. You know, well, see, that's the way. When you want to stay together, you, you know, you can't have separate 
bank accounts and you know, all this stuff. And you just create separation towards yourself. You gotta start joining things together. Yeah, you gotta join it together. It ain't, ain't your money, my money, it's our money. Hey, now you do what you you use your wisdom to do what you want to do. You know, but I'm just sharing that. Now that's not law. You know, that's just the way we function. All right, now if you need to protect your money because your wife gonna go spend all your money, you have to mom, don't come back telling me. That's what Rick told me to join our bank account together, and she went down to Dillard's or somewhere and took all our money. You know, I mean, you gotta use your discretion. You know, there have to be other things put in place. I mean, if you're not mature enough to do that, don't do it. You're gonna have drama, drama, drama. Yes, sir. One last question. Yes, sir. You can ask as many questions you want. Man. I understand we need to keep ourselves separated from anything that's satanic, but it's still a responsibility as being Christ-like is for to go amongst our enemies and try to transform them. I mean, that's our responsibility. Well, you live in a world, all right? You live in a world that people are lost. They are. All right, so you can walk. You don't even have to walk out the door. And you got lost people around you. And so when God gives you a platform or an opportunity to minister to them, minister to them. You know, it's not like you're going down in the bottom somewhere or going somewhere to win people. I mean, you, you don't have to go. You can just walk out the door. You don't have to go anywhere. I mean, so it's a part of life. You know, leading somebody to the Lord and common fellowship on a regular basis is two different things. It's two different worlds. You know, so our mission and our goal is to minister to people. You know, saved and unsaved. You know, so we'll, we'll never lose that because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it talks, that whole deal talks about God giving us the ministry of reconciliation. You know, every man has that ministry. And so we'll, we'll never lose that. You know, but when it comes for us hanging out and, you know, doing all that type of stuff, it's a different deal now. You know I mean? It, it, it's a whole different ball game. I mean, because we, the Bible says what business or what fellowship does life have with darkness, you know? I mean, what, what business does, does Bilal have with the kingdom of God? You know, so we shouldn't be doing that. But if somebody comes to your home, uh -huh. just for an example, somebody comes to your home, that's truly not Christ-like at all. Okay. He's trying to find his way. Okay. Now you sit with him, whether you call it hanging out or not hanging out, maybe two hours trying to at least share the word with him. Uh-huh. So you can make the change. That's right. I'm not talking about hanging around and going Yeah, you're out. supposed to do that. That's right. You're supposed to do that. I mean, you don't suppose what you're going to say, hey, get out, don't come, get away. No, you're supposed to be there to minister to them. You're supposed to be there to love them. You know, you're supposed to be able to let them see Christ, you know. And you might have to do it more than one time. You know, but, but you know what? As long as they're respecting my boundaries, they can come to me all they want to, you know, for me to minister to them. You know, it's only when they start disrespecting me. You know, if you call me enough, and, and, and unless God pull me away from you, I'm going to be there to minister to you. I don't care how unsaved you are. You know, because anybody that does that, I mean, there's a problem between them and God. You know, because it might be on the sixth time that, that your heart busts open and you get saved. You know what I mean? So, so you, can't, you, can't, you can't treat people, you know, like they're never going to get saved or they're never going to get converted. You, you can't do that. You know, it's a difference when somebody don't know the Lord than somebody do know the Lord, but they backslid and they just do what they want to do. It's a difference. Because the Bible tells us in Thessalonians, it said, don't even sit down and break bread with them. Right. It said, the reason being, so that they may be ashamed of your disfellowship, and they may come back into the kingdom. That's what the Bible says. You know, so we have to we have to deal with the world one way, but we have to deal with the church another way. You know, I mean, it's a whole different world. And so we learn that, as the Word of God has taught us, we learn that. And we function that, and we live it out. A lot of people don't do what they're supposed to do because they don't know. And some people just blatantly do what they want to do because they don't care. You know, but the majority, of some, a lot of people just don't know. And then you start telling the scripture and they start saying, wow, I didn't know that. I mean, it's a lot of stuff that I didn't know. And it's things I don't know now. You know, but I'm still open for God to speak to me. I mean, and I'm a pastor. You know, I'm still learning the word of God. I'm still studying the word of God. And God can speak to me on something that, you know, I'm completely clueless about. Yes, sir. When Christ walked into the house of Matthews, and the apostles actually opposed that, when they see Matthew, which they were living in fornication, there was adultery going on before Matthew was, was called. Uh -huh. So Christ walked amongst them, even though they were doing all these evil things. Yeah. And he was went to that house. He was the savior of the world. He was also he also suffered. Yeah. He was laying he was laying the platform. Yes. But we'll deal with that a little bit later. Uh, for the you don't mind. Let me go ahead and get this relationship done. I appreciate it. All right.
So uh, don't marry the one uh, you can just live with. Marry the one you can't live without. All right? Marry the one you cannot live without. Okay? Can, can you get that? Can, can anybody see that? Can you embrace that? You know, I mean, you, you need to marry somebody that you can't live without. You know? Yes, sir. I said it one time, I didn't find one that said it either. And it was J.C. Uh, Dobson, folks in the family. So, don't go to one you stand to be with, find one you can't stand to be with. Say that again? Don't look for the one you can stand to be with, you can put up with, endure. Look for the one you can't stand to be with. See things. I don't know. you got to watch that verbiage right there. Um, kind of, sort of. You know, because, you know, if you can't stand to be with, you don't need to be with. You know, you, you need to be with somebody you love. You know, you need to be somebody that loves you and that you can't see yourself without. You know, if you can't stand to be with her, you need to go find somebody you can't. Don't look for the one that you can stand to be with or you can tolerate her. Okay. Don't look for the one you can't stand to be with or you can tolerate her. Okay. Just hear it ain't clicking yet. It ain't clicked yet. You know, because if I can't stand to be with somebody, that means that's something, that's, that means something different to me. Oh, you can stand. Don't look at the one you can stand. Don't look at the one you can. Yeah. You're able to tolerate. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I got it. <laughs> Maybe I've just got a mental block right now. You know, sometimes it happens. The same thing. Okay. All right, so so uh, we all got that. All right, you must establish borders of protection number two. So I'm spending too much time and I'm following. You must establish borders of protection in your relationship. All right, borders of protection. All right, you choose one, you get one with somebody, you're developing a relationship, you're cultivating that relationship. You understand that they need to be a believer like you are. All right, we get into greatest trouble. When we start getting googly eyed with people, you know, you start melting, you know, because guess what? If, if, if you with somebody that don't melt you, you might need to reevaluate. I'm just gonna tell you, you need when when you're with somebody in life, and I, I don't have the exact scripture to go to in Solomon right now, in Song of Solomon, but but you should be able to look at the person that that you're potentially gonna marry, and you should be able to look at her. And I'm telling you, your world ought to be like nothing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Christmas ought to be happening for you. I'm just telling you. And if you're looking at somebody and Christmas don't happen for you, and it's not that you're getting, <laughs> it's not that you're getting uh, caught up in external, superficial uh, stuff, because you look beyond that. You know, you look beyond that. But there, there's a beauty, there's an inner beauty, that when you look at that person, that you love who they are. Right? You know, so so if, you, if you're hanging out with somebody and you're thinking about moving into that next place, I mean, they ought, they ought to make you feel like, man, it's like, man, it's the, it's the best thing besides Jesus Christ that ever happened to me. You know, fireworks. See, my wife, we've been married thir almost 13 years and fireworks. I look at it just like, man, she want to bless you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know, Dr. Warren Roberts said he was married his wife for almost 50 years, and he was looking at his wife and fireworks used to go off. I mean, some things would erupt on the inside of him. And that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, because guess what? If it ain't erupting on the inside of you for her, when whoever walked by, if something started happening, it might start erupting there. And now you got a real problem. You know, so you need to make sure that, that it's, it's, it's the beauty within that you, you're caught up with that individual. All right? And we're going to talk about a few other things. I mean, this this is just something that's going to keep you safe. All right? You know, I mean, we're not living in a world now. And, of course, there are different cultures that arrange marriages and different stuff like that. You know, and people, they go on and get married. And they stay married. And, you know, they might sleep in a, a different bedroom for, for 10 years. And then they come back together and they get tired of that or whatever. We've seen it all. I mean, but you want to come out the stall in love. All right? You, you, don't, want, you don't want to get out on the road and fall in love. You want to come out the gates in love. It's like, man, you want to be saying, to like, like Mark and uh, Michelle the other week, you know, you want to be saying them vows and be like, man, woo! What are you mean all my life? You know, that's the type of stuff you want. You want to be able to look at them and you want to be able to see. I mean, it's like the image of like what God created for you as a man or a woman. That's what you want. I mean, it's like you don't go to the car lot 
and just buy any old car. He just go, just give me any house. Just give me a house. You know, you don't go to a dollar store or, or, or one of these stores and just get any, any clothes off the racks and don't worry, we got a zipper button missing or whatever. Just give me some jeans. I mean, you don't do that everything else. So why do it with one of the most important things in your life? Why do it then? Right? Because what you're about to do, whoever you're going to hook up with, you're, gonna be, you, you're the one going to be waking up looking at that. You're going to see them like everybody else don't see them. You're going to see them with trust in their eyes. You're going to see them mucus moments. You know, you're going to see them like, like everybody else don't see them. You know, so let me tell you something. Don't marry somebody because of what everybody's saying. You better get before God and hear what God says. Don't let people make your lifelong decisions. Right. I'm telling them babies you're going to be making That's right. you want to be able to look at them babies and see your wife and your husband and them babies and say praise God you know I mean you don't want to get mad at her or mad at him and look at the kids and hate the kids it's like we never should have done this it happens guys it happens you know so what I'm telling you is legitimate it's legitimate and so, so, so if you're single now you have the opportunity to do what's right if you hooked up now and you have these thoughts, we need to pray for you and get you delivered so we can get you in love again. Because yes, you can't go get divorced. You know? We're going to pray some fire back in that room. Right? Right. Hey, yeah. right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, what I do? I didn't do it like that. Well, we're we, we in it now. You know, let's just get some therapy. Let's get some history. Let's, let's bring some life to this thing. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Well, actually, I just had my finger. I was going to say a family that prays together usually stays together. Everybody is praying together and don't really believe their prayers all the time. Now, I'm just being real. You know, because that is, that is, that's been a true saying. But you got people that pray together, one really praying and the other not. And then you find out in marriage counseling that they really didn't want to be married anyway. It's like, baby, we've been praying together. You never told me nothing. Well, I just didn't want to hurt you. You know what I mean? So, so it's like, let's come out the stall for real. Let, let's make this thing for real. You know what I mean? Because th there are more intimate things that happen in a relationship than I do. All right? Let me just speed up. Let me speed up. All right? So you must create borders of protection around you. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, and I'm going to read that and amplify uh, verse 1 and 2. Uh, it says, Now as to the matter of what you wrote me, it is well, and by that I mean advantageous, expedient, profitable, wholesome, for a man not to touch a woman. This means to cohabitate with her, but to remain unmarried. But because of temptation to impurity and to avoid Im immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. So, so the deal is here is that God does not agree with men and women that are not married to enter into a place of cohabitation. All right? Anybody know what cohabitation means? If you cohabitate, that means that you do what? Exactly. All right, you have sex, you live together, you're together. All right? You know, that ain't no common law in heaven. That's right. ain't, that ain't in the kingdom. That's in the world. You know, so, yeah, so the deal is, is that in order to protect yourself, if you're with somebody and you really care about them, right, you really love them, you know, God, God said that your job is to marry them. You know, if, if you want a husband, marry them. You know, I mean, you always spinning out of your house, and y'all doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, or she's staying over your house. That's wrong. That's wrong. I don't have the belt out, guys. I'm just telling you the truth. It's wrong. All right? So the deal is, if you care enough about a person like that, it's time to get ready to take the next step. Because I'm telling you, I I'm not going to be making these type of investments in somebody that I'm not going to get rid of man. You know, I'm saying, I'll spend enough money at McDonald's on you. <laughs> I'm telling them Happy Meals are getting expensive. You know, or wherever you eat that. You know, I mean, because when you start making these type of investments, you know, I'm buying you meals all the time, and you know, we're doing all this. Like, hey, baby, what are we gonna do? We need to do something because I'm invested in you. You invested in me. You know, and that's the way you gotta look at it. You know, ice cream cone here and there, okay, but you know, it start adding up. You know, it ain't, it ain't no special anymore. It's adding up. You know, I'm driving, driving to see you. You're driving to see me. We got to hook up. We got to get married. And we got to make this 
stuff count, guys. You got to make it count. You know, I'm sitting there and we uh, at uh, Baskin and Robbins or uh, Razzle Dazzle somewhere, and uh, you know, our Starbucks, and you know, we just like mush, you know, just. You know, we can't live without one another. You burn it for her and she burn it for you. And, you know, you just there. You're in a bad place. You're in a good place, but a bad place. Somebody got to do something. Somebody got to do something that's right. Because you set yourself up for failure. And then all of a sudden you say, let's go to my house. Everybody's gone. Okay. Uh, you mean you got feelings for each other, you got emotions flying, you know, the flesh is being glorified, you know, and now, now you know you bump one another and your body temperatures change. <laughs> this is what happens. But it's a very mature audience. You know, your body temperature change, and all of a sudden your hair start changing and you know, everything start changing, the blood blood vessels start changing, you know, you start feeling hot, like naturally hot. <laughs> Because now, now the flesh is the flesh is being mic'd up. The flesh is coming alive. You know, the flesh is being the, the lust of the flesh is about to be fulfilled. And all of a sudden you lean over, you know, and, and, and you make a little smooch, and the smooch turn into more than a smooch. You know, you just happen to slip and fall on the couch once you get in. You know, you just you know, I mean, it's like, you know, you just happen to just fall, you know. But the cows catch you. It's like, hey, baby, I'm oh. You know, and there you are, you know, I mean, you're like, you, you're together now. And so body is talking now. You know, what's that song, your body calling me or something? Now your body is talking. It's talking. You about to be in trouble. You about to commit sin. You know, you, you about to be in trouble. Right? So, so the Bible says to, to avoid this type of stuff, the best thing to do is to get married. Because, because if you're going to be hanging with somebody like that, and if you care about them and they care about you, you know, it's time for you to go home. I love you. I used to put my wife out all the time. She's my wife now. You know, she used to be hanging late, you know. I, I used to tell her, I said, yeah, she don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're old. I said, hey, you got to leave. <laughs> so you got to go. So you got to go. And I mean, I got saved, you know. And she was already saved. You know, she was in love with Google. Yeah, we sitting around watching TV. Laying on the bed. I said, hey, you got to go. So you got to get out of here. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Because we were sitting on a up a billion. You know? I remember one night, uh, she uh, ended up falling asleep over at my place. And, uh, you know, I ended up falling asleep, too, because she stayed too long. <laughs> the sun didn't wake me up. My phone did. There was a mom. I was like, is, is my daughter there? <laughs> I said, oh, oh uh, yes, my mom is a God-fearing woman, you know. And I'm a God-fearing man. And she's supposed to be God-fearing, too. Like, you don't play that. I was like, get it, leave right now. Please. I mean, you should never stay, you know. So, and that was one time. And it's like, never, ever, ever. So you got to get out of here. You got to leave. And if we're not going to do this, because we're going to both be in trouble. You know, and I'm supposed to be preaching now. Who won't believe me? And I'm going to come home and they see you in here with me. You know? They got to see you leaving. I'm just telling you, you got to live this thing. You got to live it. You know, because, because the deal is, what happens behind closed doors is what's important to God. That's what's important. I mean, you, you, you can mask it over to the rest of the world. Or you can do what's legitimate. You know? And if you really love her, or you really love him, you'll do what's right. Amen. You'll do what's right. Alright? So the Bible says that every man have his own wife, and every wife, every woman have her own husband. Alright? Uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, 18, the Bible says here in the New Living Translation, it said, Run from sexual sin. <laughs> Run, run. Anybody ever seen Forrest Gump? Oh, yeah. You know, run, Forrest, run. I mean, run from sexual sin. Anybody ever heard the story about uh, Joseph in the Bible? When he ran out of his garment? He ran from sexual sin. He could have slept with Potiphar's wife all day, but he refused to do it because of his commitment to God, number one. And number two, his commitment to Potiphar. 
Right. He refused to do it. And we got to get in a place where we refuse to live a lie. Alright? No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Sexual sin is a sin against your own body. Alright? There, there is no other sin in the category of sin that's like sexual sin. That's what the Bible says. Alright? In uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, 18, uh, 16 through 20, in, in the message version, it says there, there's more sex than mere skin on skin. I love the message version. It said sex is as much spiritual a mystery as physical fact. As written in scripture, the two becomes one. Since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids commitment. That's really good. And that avoids intimacy, leaving us more lonely than ever. The kind of sex that can never become one. There is a sense in which sexual sins are different from all others. In sexual sin, we violate the sacredness of our own bodies. These bodies that were made for God given for God given and God model love for becoming one with another are different. Uh, or didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place, the place of the Holy Spirit? Don't you see that you cannot live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? The physical part of you is not some piece of property. It belong, belongs to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole world. So let people see God in and through your body. And so the, so the whole deal is, is that, you know, when you understand, like, how serious sex is, you know, it's like, man, you want to save that until you get married. You know, you want to save that until you get married. That's what you want to do. Yeah, of course you Okay. Yeah, you want to save that until you get married. Because that, that's a blessing. That's a gift. It's different once you get married and then God blesses it. You know, and it's not something that you're just doing and you're running around and hoarding. All right? So but if you want to be protected, you got to keep yourself in places where you're going to be safe. You know, I mean, like crowds of people. You know, you want to be safe, go sit in the park where everybody gets. Well, you know, people got problems in the park, but I hope they're not Christian people. And I be covering my kids' eyes. I'm like, man, they got to make out right here, man. It's like, no, no, stop. But normally, normally, when people love God, you know, and they keep themselves around people, you know, they're not going to get into mischief like they would if they were alone. It's really very important to be around people, be in the open, you know. Choose, choose. If you're going to spend private time together and, and, and you want to be, uh, be, be quiet or whatever, go to a movie theater or somewhere people are. You know, you, you, chances are you're not going to, you know, not going to get into too much trouble there. And sit close to people. Don't just get in some corner somewhere. You know, sit in the midst of kids and family. You know, just get in the midst of everybody. You know, you go see whatever, Superman or whoever, just get in the pack. You know, so, so you'll feel uncomfortable if you start smooching too much or whatever. You know, you want to make sure that everything is on up and up. Unless you're in an outdoor district. In an outdoor district. Outdoor? Oh, right. I mean, you know. Get somebody with you. Bring, some, bring somebody along with you. Let them ride with you. You know, sit, let them sit in the back. You know? They sit in the back. You know, for integrity purpose. <laughs> All right. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33. In the uh, ESV version. Uh, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. In the Amplified Version, it says, Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionship, common association, corrupts and deprives good manners and morals and character. Is that amazing scripture or what? You know, so, so it's very important to know who we're dealing with. It's very important to know who you're walking with because it can corrupt your it can corrupt you morally. You know, I mean, you, you can get a, you can get a good guy to get hooked up with a bad girl and she messes world up, or you can get a good girl to get with a bad guy and messes world up. So it's very important that whoever you're dealing with, they understand the borders of sound morality. That they understand that that your body and their body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. They understand that you both belong to God. 
And so now you're not fighting against, you know, um, some some sideways system. You know what I mean? Because now you got somebody to stand with you and say, hey, we can't do this. You know, them the type of people you need in your life. We can't do this. We don't go to hell if we do this. You know, you, you need to talk like that, you know? I mean, you need to feel like that. You know what I mean? If, if I ever done anything when I first got saved, I didn't understand grace, I thought God was going to kill me. God is my witness. I'm telling you, when I first got saved, I was so happy to be saved. I, I didn't even know I was sinning. And when I sinned, because I, I was walking around, I was like, man, I'm saved, I'm not drinking no more, I'm set for I'm not sleeping around, I'm, I'm free. And so I, I was like, man, you know, I better not even look at nobody. I can't look at no girls, can't look at nobody. Because I was like, God, don't zap me. I don't even deserve to be alive. So that was my ignorance when I first got saved by grace, because I didn't understand grace. I was just so happy to be saved. You know, so the deal is, you know, that was good for me. Because it kept me, it kept me on the straight up. You know, because even, even when I was sinning, I didn't, I didn't realize that I was sinning. You know, later on uh, in life, I began to understand the whole deal about grace. I mean, but to have the consciousness of mind of that I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that is because it just ain't right is the way that you need to have that mindset. All right? All right? Yeah, man. All right. So the next component here, you must have developed in a relationship with somebody is that you must be transparent with one another. Why, why, do you want to, why do you want to get in a serious relationship with a liar? I mean, they don't tell you the truth. And it does not take long to find out who lied. All right? It, does, it doesn't take long to find out who's not truthful. I mean, you, 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 it, it's pretty easy for you to start fi figuring that people's stories that, you know, just too many stories. I had this guy when the school went, his name was Jones Douglas. And uh, we was in college together. We figured out Jones lied all the time. You know, Jones would be across the campus, he'd call and say, hey, I'm in New Orleans at the basketball game. And then we'll see Jones walking down, you know. <laughs> you know? He was like, you know, I, I flew to Chicago this weekend. You know, and then we'll see him somewhere else, you know. It's like, okay, he's lying. And somebody say, hey, he want to ride home. And he said, well, I, I, I'm, I'm in the National Guard. And so we'll drop him off halfway to the National Guard and find out they hadn't had National Guard there in 20 years. You know, I mean, it's like this guy, he's just lying, you know. I work at Popeye's, but I mean, he didn't know where he stayed. He just lied all the time. And so you, you understand that when you start dealing with people and they got a bunch of lies, you need to make sure you know who people are. You know, my, my wife and I, when we met, uh, at, we both was counselors. And uh, we started dating a couple months later, and God told me that was my wife. He said, that's the woman that, that I created for you. But this is the deal. You know, we were so poor growing up, my, my mom never saw girls come to the house. If I had a girl, I took them to someone else's house. And so, so the day, <laughs> God is true. The God is true. My mom was last, she'll tell you. He tells the truth. Because we pulled up one day in, in, in front of my mom's house, where she still lived in that two-bedroom shack where we grew up in, man, and she wasn't moving. You know, I had dogs and stuff. That's what it was poor. You know, and uh, when she pulled up and she saw my wife, she's like, man, this must be for real. Because uh, he, 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 he bringing her to me. And, I, and my wife came in. I already prepped her. I told her, you know, I told her how things were going to be. You know, but the deal is, if she was going to be with me and I was going to be with her, she had to see where I came from. You know, she had to know my mom. She, she had to know my people. You know, I don't care if they was in the hood. I didn't care what they were. I didn't want to be together six months later and then we pass by a house and say, baby, who house is that? They're all speaking to you. It's like, oh, I don't know those people. <laughs> people live a lot like that. You know, that's a lie. I don't want to live a lie like that. If I was poor growing up, and if I'm poor now, I want you to know who I am. You know, so if you're dealing with somebody, they need to know who you are. And they need to know how your family is. Right? You know, I mean, if you don't feel comfortable bringing them around your family, then you need to reevaluate the whole deal. They, they need to know if you got a bunch of heathens in your family. They, they need to know if everybody is demonic or whatever. They need to know. You know, I mean, I told my wife the whole school about our family. You know, I mean, so, hey, this is what we do. You know, this is who we are. You know, and she came in and she accepted that. And so she took me to her family. You know, I met all her people. And so we began to know each other even on a more intimate level. You know, transparency. She said one of the most attractive things that really reeled her in is that when I met her, I told everything. I said, hey, you know, I just got saved. You know, I come out of this, I come out of that, I come out of this, I come out of this. I said, you know, hey, I'm just trying to live right. You know, I said, I ain't trying to date nobody, I ain't trying to do nothing. I'm, I just got free. You know, and so I was really transparent about where I came from. 
You know, and I kind of shared with her, you know, what God had brought me out of. And I was on a journey. It happened to be a lot. You know, and she looked at that and she began to explain to me about her life. And she began to share with me about her life. And she was transparent with me about her life. And so we, we ended up on a great foot. It's because she didn't have a hidden agenda. She wouldn't marry me for my money because I didn't have none. You know, I wouldn't marry her for her money. She had a little bit, but she didn't have much. You know, she was a college student. You know, but the deal is, is that we married each other because we loved each other. We loved each other. We were in love with one another. Matter of fact, when I came out, uh, the trees even looked different. I remember we met. I was like, man, life was different. It was like a movie. We'd go hang out at the college and lay on the ground and listen to the symphony. We didn't have any kids. I mean, we'd eat a box, box of chicken together. I mean, we were just in love, man. And guess what? Five babies later, we still in love. You know, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it's supposed to be. Said a word to all the men. 
He said, don't marry a woman because of your flesh. This devastated his life. He said, never ever marry a woman because of your flesh. He had one of the most beautiful women we've ever seen. Deion Sanders. You know, he's a man of God. And him and his wife is divorced after all these years. You know, and he said, don't ever, ever marry a woman. Or don't ever marry a man either if you're a woman. Because he got, you know, big biceps or whatever. If he, if he got a tie around his thumb. You know, I mean, marry him and the tie together and try to help him to untie his tie. You know, you know I mean, don't marry somebody because of looks. You know, marry them for the inner beauty. Marry them for who they really are. You know, because guess what? All that stuff, you, 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 hey, you can only get so many plastic surgeons dollar part. It's going to start, hey, you can only get so many. You know, you can only get so much silicone in your body. You know, you, you can only, I mean, because guess what? All it's going to sag on day. You know, I mean, all of it's just going to deteriorate, you know. I mean, they, they can't pull it back enough. You know, they don't have enough skin. They can't, they can't lift all this. It's going to drop. You know, you're going to grow old again. I want somebody I can grow old with. I want somebody I can get on the rocking chair. Let's go do something. Uh, just push something around or something. <laughs> Amen. Because nobody want to grow old lonely. Nobody want to, I mean, honestly, nobody want to grow old without somebody. If you grow old, you want to grow old with somebody. You know, that's the way it should be. You know, so if you believe in a lie that, you know, you're going to be by yourself, you're not going to be by yourself. Because God hadn't designed it for you to be by yourself. Unless you've been called the gift of celibacy. Which most of us in this room, none of us in this room probably call it. That's a very rare breed, you know. And so what we need to understand is that we got to get in God's system so we can get what God has for us. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right. So uh, the Bible says in uh, Matthew 19, verse 5, last scripture, it says, uh, it says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother, shall be united firmly, jointly, inseparably to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. All right? So, so the deal is, guys, when, when you do get married, or you decide to get married, you know, praise God for mom, praise God for dad. But the Bible says that a man is supposed to leave, uh, leave his parents and his mother and, and his wife, they cleave together. That's what the Bible says. And so you need to make sure that you're following that principle is that, you know what, I mean, I've seen a lot of marriages destroyed because of the family. You know, family ties, you know, the mama was controlling or the daddy was controlling or somebody had issues and they wanted this with it. Keep people out of your marriage. It's one of the things our pastor told us years ago. You know, we have issues. We don't go to our mama. We don't go to our dad. That's great if you can. We go to our leaders. We go to somebody that's going to be unbiased. We go to somebody that's going to be able to minister to us and help us to get ourselves on track. You know, I mean, because somebody could easily, and, and it doesn't mean that they're impure when they share stuff. You know, I mean, it just kind of like out of, out of the heart sometimes flows things that are really not profitable for us. And it doesn't mean that mom or dad is bad. It's just, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't profit you. You know, I mean, you you can get counsel from your parents. You know, but at the same time, you don't want to go share stuff to your mom or your dad about your wife, and now your wife come around and your mom looking at her with two eyes or three eyes or your dad don't speak or vice versa. You go over to their house and they slam the dough on you, the dog bark at you, everybody's upset at you because <laughs> they know you got issues. Don't put your partner out like that. You know, don't put them out. I mean, leave it. Let that be private. That's y'all business. You come around, be smiling, you know. Just be smiling. No teeth or many teeth. Just smile. <laughs> We, we doing good. Just pray for us. You know, I mean, don't, don't, that ain't they business. You know, keep them out of it. Because, you know, they deserve to be in an unbiased situation. Don't cause them to be biased. Because they do love you and they love her too. But chances are they might love you a little bit more because you come from them. You know, or, or, or her. You know, so you need to make sure that you're very cognizant of that. All right. Uh, when you're looking for a spouse, a companion, or a friend, or a lover, there are certain things you should look for in a mate. They need to be saved, number one. They need to be saved. They need to be born again. They need to be saved. All right? Number two, they need to be honest. Don't marry a liar. You can if you want to, you know, but don't marry a liar. You know, say, I didn't find out till later, but you better do your research now. Do your research now. You know, ask God to show you, reveal to you what's up. Because let me tell you something. Everybody from the front end, if, depending on what they want you for, they're not going to present themselves as being bad. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna present, oh I'm just bad, you know. No, they're not gonna present themselves. So you need to you need to you need to know who you marry. You know, my wife and I uh, we met uh, in November, we started dating in February of the following year, we were married in September. You know, I got a chance to find out if she had an attitude, 
Uh, even though I loved her, she got a chance to find out if I had issues. We spent just that much of time around one another, and we started realizing who we were. You know what I mean? Because you you got to spend time around people to find out who they really are. I mean, because you don't want to get out on the road and you say, I do, and you find out you married a demon. You won't do that. You need to make sure that you spend a little time, you know what I mean, that you, you know, not that you try to manipulate and push buttons, but you want to make sure you spend just a little time. You know, uh, you know, I wanted to marry. She said, well, we're going to get married a year or two years from now. I said, no. And I said, we need to go and get married now, baby. You know, I said, we can't, I can't wait two years. You know, you, I'm I, I told her. She was like, we're going to get through with college and everything, whatever. I said, we'll get through with college married. <laughs> you know, because I'm in love with you, you're in love with me. We're not going to keep putting this thing off. You know, so we talked to pastors and leaders or whatever, and we set that thing up and got some counseling. And before long, we was married, saved, and we was doing what married people do. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 You know what I mean? So, I mean, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. And I'm not going to burn, baby. You know, I'm going to get married. And so, you know, if you're in a situation where you're burning, you got to stop burning and start getting married. You know, Amen. Amen. All right. So, you need to marry a person that's trustworthy. Trustworthy. All right. Uh, you need to marry somebody that's reliable. And you need to marry somebody that's going to be a person of integrity. A person of integrity. You know, uh, people around people kind of tell the story. You don't have to hear people talk. All you got to do is watch people with people. Just, just watch. And we got the upper hand because we say, and we start asking God, God, give me discernment. Can I tell you something? Don't overlook the little stuff. Because the little stuff may be an indication that there's more. Don't, don't overlook, oh, no, it's small. No, it's the small foxes that destroy the planet. You know, the things that are concealed. You know, I mean, somebody, they may turn into Dracula at midnight. You know, you need to know. You know, I mean, they just may be sober while you're around, you know. And they may get there and drink a little casual wine, and they start coming out of their clothes in the bar. You say, hey, that's a demon. You know, that's a problem. I mean, there are indications. You can watch there are indications all around you. You know, don't cast this stuff off. Because guess what? All the signs you need may be right before your eyes. All the signs that you need. You know, uh, just another thing, guys, let me just say this right here, and uh, I'm going, this is it, is that uh, in developing a relationship with somebody that's going to lead into marriage, you know, sometimes there is a, uh, there's an empty motive sometimes by people, and the first thing they want to do is get close to whoever you're closest to. All right? You know, that's things to watch out for. I'm not saying that's always the case, but you need to watch out. When they're not putting time and effort to be close to you, first to being close to somebody that's closest to you, because sometimes people feel like if I can get close to whoever he or she is closest to, then I can get them. That's a demonic motive. That's a demonic agenda. You know, because the family, I'm not trying to win the family over. I wasn't trying to win my wife's family over. I just wanted her. I knew the family came with it, whether they liked me or not, she was going to marry me. You know, that's just the way it was. And I was going to marry her, no matter if my family agreed with it or not. You know, I mean, they just had to accept that, hey, you know, we in love and we're going to get married. You know, I mean, so just be aware of stuff like that. You know, this is wisdom. I mean, be aware of stuff like that. Because that's the way the devil operates sometimes. Because if somebody care about somebody and love somebody, they're going to put time and energy into that individual. Not into that child that you got. You know, I've seen women come in and try to hook up with a guy, and, you know, they just fall in love with the child because they see how much the guy loves the child, you know, or vice versa. And that's great. But make sure your, your motive is pure. Make sure what you're doing is pure. You know, when you love a person, love that person. And love was attached to them, but love them even the more. And love has action. All right? Love is action. You show people you love them. You know, my wife would get cards on the door. I didn't have any money. I, I'll put a Reese's Pieces in, a, in an envelope or something and a note and say, I love you. I didn't have any money, but I, she knew I love her. You know, when I got a chance to buy a ring, I went to her job and said, baby, hey, will you marry me? You know? And so these are just some of the things, guys, that, that in, a, in a relationship with somebody that you need to look at and you need to be aware. All right? Pastor Ray was going to do, uh, do communion. Uh, but to the married folks that's already married, if you're not in love 
and that love is not being shown, you need to go before God, you and your spouse, and you need to pray for holy fire to hit you. You need to pray for God to bring electricity into your household. You need to pray for God to, to make that baby start leaping on the inside of you again. It doesn't matter what, what area you are in life, you ask God to breathe up over your marriage, breathe up over your bedroom, breathe up over your fellowship. You know, you need to start smooching again, you know, brushing teeth. You know, you need to start, amen. Amen. Start smooching. You know, come in, give a hug. Don't walk in and just be cold. Get a hug. Give me, give me a hug. Just hold me. You know, some people just want to be held. Just, just hold me. You know, I mean, some of us singing right now, we just want to be held. You know, I mean, that's another thing, guys. If you, if you are married, you know, don't be laid up in somebody's bosom. You know, stay out of, stay out of people's bosom. You know, the Bible says that a man finds pleasure in the bosom of his wife. You know, and some people come, just, can I get this example right quick? It's like, I, I just got to do this. It's like, you know, he's a woman. I'm a man. <laughs> example. But he's, he's uh, I can't do it with a woman to be provocative. So I call this guy and say, hey, man, how you doing? And I'm like, hey, how you doing? These ain't your bosoms. Stay out of that. Stay out of that. You're heartbroken. You got problems going on. You want to lay on somebody's chest? L lay on your pillow. You know, honestly. Because the, the Bible tells us that you should find pleasure in the bosoms of your wife. You know, stay out of people's bosoms, male and female. You know, you come up, you want to open it. <laughs> you know, I'm staring all that right up. Hey, you know, that's, leave that room. That's for that man that, that's going to get married to his woman, or for that woman that's going to get married to her man. You know, you eliminate problems by doing the proper thing. But sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we don't know. And some people just, you just let them say, oh, I just don't want to lay on your chest forever, Pastor Abraham. Just let me just lay and just lay on your chest. <laughs> Yeah. Just, just, just let me just wet your shirt up. Just, just let me cry. I love you. You'd be like, man, because I've been there. It's like, oh, it's going to be okay. It's like, man, you know, we got to protect ourselves, guys. Amen. We got to protect ourselves. And we don't mean any harm, but we don't want to issue out the wrong message. We want to issue out the right message. We don't want to be a stumbling block to people. People would walk up and they would say, that's right. Don't steal from your future husband or wife. He just got married again. What is done? You know, protect that stuff. You know, protect it. Protect it. Keep it on lockdown. And if you already started the body clock, meaning that if you're not a virgin anymore, you know, you pray for God to cause you to be converted. You know, God, lock this stuff up. Turn the clock off. You know, we'll talk about that in the future. Say, God, stop all. Just turn the clock off, God. Just put a lock, pad, and key on everything until we get married. And he'll do it. Because sometimes when you start this body clock, you know, it's the body be speaking. Television, everything, it'd be speaking. So God, just lock this thing up. You know, just keep it unlocked until I'm able to enjoy it with my spouse. All right? Amen. Let's give the Lord praise, God. All right. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify your name. Thank you for this word tonight, Lord. Lord, I pray that something was said and done, Lord, to cause your people, Father, to be in a place of edification, that we lift it up, Lord God, that they shall do much better in their life. They may bring glory and honor to your name. We just want to say thank you once again. It's all for your glory that we've done and we've done tonight. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to have communion. Uh, Pastor Abraham, have communion tonight. And, uh, of course, you guys already know that Jesus Christ himself he instituted communion. The Bible says on the time of Passover that Jesus was there with the disciples. And he was there in the upper room. And the Bible says that in the midst of while they were sitting there, Jesus Christ, he took bread and he broke the bread. And he held it up and said, this is my body that is broken for many. And in the same breath, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. He said, without the shedding of my blood, there could be no remission of sin. Without the shedding of my blood, that could be no atonement for the sins of humanity. You know, Paul told the church at Corinth, he said, you know, many people are sick in their body, and some are even deceased because they did not discern the Lord's table, meaning that they entered into holy communion with sin active in their life. And all we have to do as believers is confess our sin before the Lord and repent and turn away from it. You know, because it's very important to understand that this is holy 
God has made it available for us to remember the sacrifice that He made upon the tree. Jesus said, as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of Him, and we do show forth His death. As Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, it's our responsibility to look to the cross and to look at the sacrifice that Jesus Christ became for all of humanity to say. Remember Him. Remember how Isaiah said that Jesus was marked beyond human recognition. The Bible said He was beat, He was spit upon, He was flogged, His beard was pulled from Him. Jesus Christ was literally annihilated for the sins of humanity. And so today, or tonight, we want to turn our focus and we want to remember the Lord. We want to remember the sacrifice He made. You know, we can do this every day because He said, as often as you do it, you do show forth my death. Remember me. So let's pray. And as we pray and ask God to forgive us of any sins that we participated in, Pastor Abe and Brother Mark will come and we'll participate in the Holy Communion. Dear Heavenly Father, we, first of all, we just want to say thank you. We can't say thank you enough, Lord. Lord, we ask you that you would forgive us all of all of our sin. Anything that we've done, anything that we've said, Lord, anything we've been engaged in that is unlike you, Lord, we ask you to forgive us. And we ask you to be merciful to us, Father. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you would wash us afresh in your blood. That you would sanctify us and make us whole. That we shall not be guilty of the body and the cup of the Lord Jesus. Christ. Lord, cause us to be mentally refreshed today of the sacrifice you made Jesus upon Calvary's hill. We just want to say we love you. We thank you that we have an advocate through Jesus. That we can come before the throne of God and ask for forgiveness. That you forgive us of our sins. We thank you today for being God. We thank you today for being the lover of our soul. And we remember the sacrifice you made in Jesus' name. Thank you.